Let's look at five top Cubase mixing plugins. Hey, what's going on? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you are new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell so you don't miss anything, share and like if you enjoy this video. Now, don't forget that I'm releasing my new Cubase mixing course, link is down below. Now, let's look at those top five Cubase mixing plugins. And I'm gonna start this one out with an EQ called Frequency. And this one is a part of the pro version of Cubase only. Now, Frequency is an advanced type EQ. It's comparable to, uh, to some third-party plugins. It has that high quality side of it. Uh, we have access to eight bands. Now, I'm only gonna do a brief overlook of the plugin itself, and I'm gonna show you what I like about this plugin. First of all, we have eight bands, and then we have access to a bunch of different filter types. For high pass and low pass filters, we can go up to a cut of 96 dB per octave. And also, uh, we have access to all the other filters like low shelf, high shelf, notch, and of course, peak, which is usually what we use. Um, and then, and this is something that I like a lot with frequency, is that when working on a stereo channel, uh, you can process each channels separately. So let me explain. Um, by default, like it does with all other EQs, you're gonna process the left and right channel all together. But you can also process the left and the right separately if you just click on that small arrow. You're gonna switch to left and right processing. Uh, that means that you're gonna have access to the left channel and the right channel separately by just selecting one of those two tabs. Um, so if I select the left one and I start to play with the uh, parameters that I have here, it's only going to move the left channel out of that band. And same if I want to work mid-side processing with this uh, EQ. I can just uh, bring that to the MS side, which is going to also process the mid, uh, the mid channel separately from the side channel. And this is actually very cool. Um, it's not something that I use a lot, but it it does happen that I, I'm gonna use that mid-side processing maybe on a, an instrument channel or on the mix bus uh, or in mastering. That can be useful in mastering also. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's very cool to have this tool straight in Cubase. So let me have you listen how that sounds like on this drum recording. Okay, so if I just, uh, let me just uh, work on the side. So I'm just gonna add high pass filtering on the sides only. If I do the opposite, So this is what mid-side processing does. It's gonna process the mid-channel separately from the side channels. So the center separately from the sides. And this is an advanced feature found in Frequency. Now, if you don't have access to the pro version of Cubase, you won't have access to Frequency, uh, but you can also use the Studio EQ, which is a stripped down version of what we get with Frequency, but with you know, just basic features. Only four bands and a limited type of filters. And you don't have access to mid-side or left-right channels uh, separately. Uh, but it is just a regular type EQ. And also, and this is something that I do uh, a lot in my mixes, even when mixing with third-party plugins, that doesn't matter. I always am gonna use, if I need to just EQ uh, quickly a channel, I'm gonna use the EQ from the channel strip. Um, and you can access that from the EQ tab straight out of the mix console and just clicking on top. And by clicking on that blue line, it's gonna open the EQ of this channel and you'll be able to just start adding some, uh, some filters and stuff. So very, very fast um, to, to add just a cut or a boost on the channel quickly. You can also access the same by opening the channel settings window of that specific channel and click on the EQ tab and work your EQ out from this point. Very simple to use and this is something that I do on a regular basis if I need to EQ a channel very quickly. Now I'm going to talk about compression and we're going to look at the vintage compressor and the tube compressor. I'm going to count that at, as one 
uh, one plug-in since we're talking about compression. Uh, but those are actually very nice compressors. And they will give you a kind of a vintage tone and something different and less transparent than what we have with the regular compressor in Cubase. So if you need something that is a bit more colorful, um, the, um, the vintage compressor and also the tube compressor is actually going to give you that. And this is actually very nice. Um, now, let's start with the... Um, uh, the vintage compressor, which I made a video on it, and same for the tube one. I'm going to link those videos uh, uh, on top and down below. So if you want to know way more and uh, take a deeper look at those plugins, uh, just watch those two videos that I produced um, a few months ago. Uh, but for now, uh, what I want to show you is this very cool feature called Punch. Now, Punch is something unique to this plugin, and it's going to act a bit like a pre-delay will on a reverb. So it's going to add a bit of uh, pre-delay to the signal before the compressor starts compressing. So it's a bit different than what the attack is going to do. But by delaying that signal by, I think it's like 10 milliseconds or so, it's going to add automatically a bit more punch to the signal because the initial transients are fully going to go through. Uh, which is quite nice. So I kind of like using that when uh, when adding compression on a kick or a snare. So that's pretty cool because you can keep, you know, that compression effect, but adding a bit more punch compared to a slow attack. Um, so it's a matter of blending the uh, those parameters all together and finding the sweet spot. Okay, so let's listen to this in the context of the drum recording. Pretty cool. Let's add this to the, the kick drum as well. If I bypass both. If you want to know more about this plugin, just watch the video that I did on this plugin only. Uh, next, the tube compressor. Okay, so let's uh, uh, work this one out on the snare also. And uh, the cool thing about the tube compressor and what I like about this one is the drive knob that we have. And that will add a lot of character and color to the compressed sound. Um, and there's also like on the other one, the mix knob. And I kind of like using this tube compressor in parallel. So I'm going to leave it at 50%. And the ratio at low, which is at around a three to one. And let's have a listen. Pretty cool. I really like what Drive does and character, they kind of uh, work together. Um, you know, so if you want to add a bit more saturation, you know, to the uh, compressed sound, uh, Drive is the way to go and it's going to add that character and color to the sound. Um, so this is what the tube compressor is all about. Again, go and watch this video that I made a month ago, um, talking about this in a deeper way. Next, we're going to talk about reverb and reverence is a very good reverb uh, part of Cubase Pro, again, for the Pro version only. Now, Reverence is a convolution reverb. That means that it will use impulse responses to process the audio signal. Now, an impulse response is a recording of an impulse of a specific room or place that you load in the plugin. Now, if we look at frequency, we already have a bunch of impulse responses loaded uh, that comes with the plugin, of course. But you can also, and this is the very cool thing about this plugin, is that you can import your own impulse responses if you want to. And it's going to support AIFF wave and AIF files. Um, like I have a bunch of uh, uh, impulse responses that I've gathered throughout the years, and I can load them into my uh, into Reverence if I want to use them, which is very nice. But the ones that we already have in this plugin, they sound very good. The one by default that loads when you open the plugin is called LA Studio, and it's actually a very good sounded room. So let's just have a quick listen if I add that on the snare only.
So this is actually a preset that I use a lot, you know, whether I'm using third-party plugins or not, reference is going to be used on almost all of my mixes. Again, you have a bunch of different impulses that you can load that sound very, very good. Like, uh, let's go with the plate drum lander. And if you want to import your own, you just go to your folder and you import whatever you want. That's a pretty cool one, <laughs> brick wall. I like this one. So that is Reverence part of Cubase Pro. Next, let's talk about delay. Now, if we look at what we have as far as delay goes in Cubase, we have like several choices. Uh, we have the mono delay, stereo delay, ping pong delay, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, but my favorite by far is the new tap delay um, that came out with version 10.5. This is not only a pro version feature, I think you can get this one on Artist as well. Now, the multi-tap delay is like a beast, okay? I just started not too long ago to dive into it. And I have to say that I am very impressed. This plugin only can be a third-party plugin, and Steinberg could actually sell that as a separate plugin, and it would actually sell. <laughs> uh, trust me about that, because it is a very nice delay, uh, which has a lot of different features that will give you a bunch of options, and the possibilities are endless with this plugin. You just need to dive into it to start with, and you're going to be good to go. Actually, my good friend Dom Sigalas made a video on this one, and also I talk about uh, uh, this plugin in my upcoming course. Um, but you know, it is a very nice plugin. So what I did here is just to give you a, dem a demonstration because I'm not going to go and fully dive into the plugin on in this video. However, I want you to listen to how this plugin sounds like and the stuff that you can do with it. So I have this guitar recording going on. Okay, so let's add a bit of a uh, tap delay. So what I'm going to do here is just to uh, sing that to one eighth of a note, maybe uh, dotted. Let's go with dotted. And it's cool because, you know, with the top section here, you can add some coloration to your delay, you know, with a bit of saturation and filters and stuff like that, you know, um, which adds a lot of character to the delay itself. And that's why they call it character on top. Um, so this is the kind of sound and vibe that you're going to get with this plugin. You can use it as a simple delay and the, all of your time-based signatures are going to be right here. And also the feedback, you know, mix. Um, spatial, if you want to just uh, bring that a bit, bring the stereo field a bit narrower or wider. And again, you know, um, output and stuff. But you can also use different taps, which is where this plugin is going to start to shine. So let's go and add some. And what I'm going to do here is to bring that to one half of a note instead and use the taps. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna add a second one. I can actually just double click anywhere I want or I just I can just bring up that uh, tap wheel one notch and it's gonna add up to eight different taps. <laughs> And the cool thing about that is you can click on panorama and you're going to be able to pan those different taps. Now, mines are panned. The first one is panned to the left and the second one to the right. The third one is straight in the center. And also you can have access to the different levels. If you just want to bring one louder uh, compared to the others, you can you have control over the, the level of those taps. Very, very well done. Then the cool thing is on top of that, you can add more effects if you want to. You can add a loop effects, a tap effect, so only effects on those different taps or a post effects, which will add an effect on uh, the whole sound. So what I'm going to do here is just to add a post effect. And what I did here, and this is actually pretty cool, I added an envelope filter, an overdrive, and a reverb. Okay. So check this out. <laughs> I 
I love that. You know, I love to have so much control on a delay. It's crazy. I just love it. Uh, so this is a plugin that I started to work with not too long ago. When it first came out, I remember I opened the plugin. I was a bit intimidated, to be honest with you, worked with the presets. That was fine. And uh, once I got into it and started to understand how the plugin works, I was like, okay, this is very cool. So, you know, once you get a hold of the plugin, I'm telling you the possibilities with this one are endless. Right now, it is actually one of my favorite delays. So that was the multi-tab delay. Next, let's take a look at the saturation. Now for saturation, Quadrafaz is a very cool plugin. It's a multi-band saturation plugin, meaning that you can add saturation on different band of frequencies that you can set up from the top here, from the top window. I also made a video a couple of years ago talking about this very cool plugin. I'm going to link it on top. Uh, now you can also use uh, uh, Quadrafaz as a single band if you want to by clicking on that SB uh, button right here, which is going to transform this plugin as a single band uh, saturation plugin, which actually sounds very good also. Um, so let's try it out on this drum groove. Okay, so let's add a bit of saturation uh, straight on the mid range. Pretty cool. And you know what? Something very nice also is the delay that we have. We can actually add a delay to the saturated signal. That's pretty cool. And you also have a mix knob right here that will uh, parallel process the full plugin, or you can do the same with each different bands right here. So there's a mix knob for every bands that you work with. You can also increase the width of uh, each bands also, which is actually very nice. I'm gonna try this one as a single band processor. Let's this time try the tape because we have like different types of uh, drives that uh, we have access to as well. So tape, tube, distortion, amp, and a decibel. So I'm going to take tape. So there you go, my friend. Those are my top five mixing plugins found in Cubase. If you have any comments, questions, or if you want to share your own favorite mixing plugins that you have in Cubase or in any other DAW, leave everything down below in the comment section and also share and like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you are new here. Until next time, take care and see you.